including ventilators. Oh, I'm so excited! Today, he was so excited. I've just had the most wonder bubble idea. Mr. Oh. Mentor doesn't just invent things, he invents words too. Meanwhile, at the mill on the marsh, Auntie Jaws was having a clear out of my cousin Jemima's things. I never realised Jemima had so many dolls. She's far too old for them now. Look, Grandpa, dolls' clothes. There's a princess, a fairy, a firefighter, and a nurse. Oh, yes, I remember these. I've even worn some of them. And Grandpa winked, and I winked back, kind of. Now keep them safe. They might be useful. Just then, <laughs> Uncle CJ and Josh came in. They had news. We've got news. Mr Mentor, the inventor, has decided to have an open day at the lighthouse. It starts this afternoon and the whole of Sunny Sands is invited. Mr Mentor is going to get all his inventions working all at the same time. Sounds wonder bubble. How ridiculous. Spectacular. <laughs> yes, today Mr Mentor was promising us a day of spectacular surprises. I'll pop into the lighthouse in Cambo to see if Mr Mentor needs any help. I'll take my toolbox. Good idea. Right. I'm going to see what's lurking under Jemima's bed. All the inventions all working together. I don't think Mr Mentor can manage it. You're not thinking of helping too, are you, Grandpa? Of course. Mr Mentor usually needs all the help he can get. And I can't let him down on his open day. <gasps> not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! Can you see if you can. Train. He even flies on Elsie's Mrs Ostrich. There he is! Which is amazing, because ostriches can't fly, actually. Oh, I see Grandpa's gone for a little lie down. It's all he seems to do these days. I wish he was more adventurous. <laughs> CJ got there first and rushed up the stairs. Man with toolbox. Mr. Mentor? Oh. Mr. Mentor, where are you? I'm here. Oh. While Uncle CJ was helping Mr. Mentor get up, Grandpa flew in through the window. What's wrong? Have you got a cold? Worse. Much, much worse. I've been working so hard to get all my inventions ready. I've got a thumptastable headache. Oh, dear. And there's still so much to do. I've got to get all my inventions working all at the same time. How many are working so far? Not one. The whizzy Woodlesome wake waker-upper won't wake up. The fabidiculous flower flooper won't floop. Oh, and the ping-a-ding-a-dong won't ping or ding or dong. Oh, I've got my work cut out here. It's all right. I'm here to help. I've brought all my tools. But first, I'm going to find you some medicine. Grandpa started to creep over to the whizzy woodle some waker upper. But Uncle CJ kept getting in the way. I have a spoonful of this. Oh, I hate medicine. It tastes horrible. It'll make you feel better. No, it won't. It'll make me feel worse. Don't Ooh. be silly. Come on. Don't Grandpa just... couldn't get to the whizzy woodle some waker upper. He decided to go for something else. The fabidiculous flower flooper. You will. Won't, won't, won't. <laughs> Don't be such a baby. Oh. Come here. But Grandpa couldn't get to the fabidiculous flower flooper. He had to hide quickly. So he jumped into Uncle CJ's toolbox. Won't, won't, won't. I won't take it to there. I thought you wanted to feel better so that you can fix your inventions. I'll never do it. There isn't time. It's impossible. I'm calling the whole thing off. You're cancelling, but you can't. Oh, no. I've no choice. I promised everyone a day of spectacular surprises, not a day of disappointable disasters. 
Okay. It's up to you. Oh, no. I hope you feel better soon, Mr. Mentor. Try and get some sleep. So Uncle CJ left the lighthouse with Grandpa still inside the toolbox. He drove back to the mill on the marsh and told us the bad news. Oh, that's bad news. I was really looking forward to Mr. Mentor's open day. We all were, but Mr. Mentor was far too ill to deal with lots of visitors. And none of his inventions were working. Not a single one. Well, now you're back, you can help me, CJ. There's an enormous box right on the top of Jemima's wardrobe. At last, I can talk to Elsie. No sign of Grandpa. What do you think's going on? Don't know. Why didn't he fix Mr Mentor's inventions? Maybe he couldn't. Maybe he got stuck somewhere. What's that? It's coming from in there, the toolbox. <laughs> Grandpa! I've got to get back to the lighthouse. To fix all his inventions? Yes, but before I do that, I've got to get Mr Mentor to take his medicine. How are you going to do that without him recognising you? Oh, good point. I had an idea. I know! You can dress up as a little nurse and then fly home in Josh's helicopter. Brilliant! So that's exactly what Grandpa did. <laughs> Mr Mentor was sitting in his chair, trying to get to sleep. He was still feeling really poorly. Mr. Mentor. Mr. Mentor. Uh, uh, what? Who? Oh. Who are you? I'm your own special nursey, and I've come to look after you. Oh. Did I invent you? Oh, I suppose I must have done. How remarkable. Oh, I can even invent while I'm asleep. Mr. Mentor, my dear, I know you're feeling poorly. That's the reason I'm here. The remedies before you, just a spoonful will restore you. The taste is quite delicious. You'll be feeling more delicious. No, I won't. But you will. No, I won't. Do keep still. Ooh. Mr. Mentor, my dear, you are being very silly. You must let me come near. You mustn't be so grumpy, even though your head is thumpy. Nurse is here to make you better. I won't, but you will. No, I won't, but you're ill. Listen, Nursey, I know that you're trying hard to help me, but I want you to go. Not until I've done my duty with this medicine so fruity. Take the spoon and I will leave you. Is that true? Can I believe you? Yes, you can. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Delicious. Now, Mr. Mentor, I want you to close your eyes and think about your inventions. Imagine them all working, all at the same time. Yes, Nursie, I will. And thank you. You're a treasure. <sighs> so Mr. Mentor did what he was told, and soon he was fast asleep. And while he was sleeping, Grandpa got to work, mending all the inventions. As soon as Grandpa was finished, he flew back to the mill on the marsh. How did you get on, Grandpa? Mission accomplished. At last I can take my shrinking cap off. Haven't you better get changed first? Oh, yes. I forgot. <laughs> Downstairs, Uncle CJ was on the phone to Mr Mentor. Not only am I feeling completely better, but all my inventions are working all at the same time. <laughs> that is fabidiculous. And brillioso. And whizzy woodlesome. Upstairs, Grandpa took off his shrinking cap and came back to his normal size. We did it. 
Well, it was mainly you, Grandpa. Not at all. You got me out of the toolbox and it was Elsie's idea for me to dress up. Yes, Josh. It was teamwork. Teamwork! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Grandpa, you're up and about. We've got some great news. The day of spectacular surprises is back on. <laughs> so now we can all go to the lighthouse. Elsie, Josh, Grandpa. Wait, don't we get to pick up Mrs Ostrich? I left her there, remember? Except you can't go, can you, Grandpa? <sighs> if only there was some magical way we could get you up all those stairs. Yes, if only. <laughs> Off you go. Will you? The dad is on the phone. Sorry. He's never off it. Those poor children. But at that moment they came in. I'll call you back. Yeah, all right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Mr. Coalminder, this is Grandpa. <laughs> Please don't. Oh, excuse me. Hello. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And this is Caroline and Callum. Uh, welcome to Sunny Sands. So, what are you going to do today? Do you like lighthouses, Callum? He doesn't know. Well, do you like ice cream sundaes, Caroline? Um, he doesn't know. Well, there's lots to see and do in Sunny Sands. Um, how about a trip to Mr. Whoops' shop? Great idea. Uh, no. uh, You'll love Mr. Whoops, and his shop is the best toy shop in the world. Yes, this was the day the coal miners called on Mr. Whoops. Josh, I'll meet you in the meadow by Queenie in five minutes. Coming. My word. Mr. Call Minder has never missed a call, has he? That phone is glued to his ear. Those poor kids, he never even lets them speak. It's no wonder they don't know what they like or don't like. Well, we can help Caroline and Callum choose something from Mr. Whoops' shop, can't we, Josh? Something that they really like. Oh, sorry, Grandpa, but I think Queenie might be a bit overcrowded if you come to. Josh will be able to help Caroline and Callum choose. Oh, I'm sorry there's no room for you, Grandpa. <sighs> But there is. <gasps> Not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! When my Grandpa shrinks, there's no stopping him. He can run so fast you can't catch him, and his magic makes things go. So, he can travel about in the plane, and even in my helicopter. But today, all he needed to do was this. Getting Grandpa quick. So off we sail down the river in Uncle CJ's boat Queenie towards Sunny Sands. And I whispered to Grandpa, you'd better behave, Grandpa. And Grandpa whispered, I always behave. We arrived at Mr. Whoops' shop, opened the door, expecting to see Mr. Whoops' jolly face, but... <laughs> that gave you a big fat shock, didn't it? It was great, Aunt Loretta. Oh, no. I'm looking after Mr. Whoopsie's shop. His mother's poorly, so I've told him to go and see her. What a surprise. Well, since you're here, Loretta, I'll leave Josh with you. I've just got a few things to do at the beach hut. Oh. Who do we have here, then? <laughs> well, this is Mr. Coalwinder, Caroline and Callum, and this is my great-aunt Loretta. You're my first customers. Come here. Come on. Lovely. We'll have a look around. There's so much to choose from. What's that? What? What? Hang on, hang on. Zombies. I'll just be outside, yeah? You choose something. So, what do you fancy? Catherine and Caliban, eh? Caroline and Callum. I quickly opened my backpack and released Grandpa onto a shelf. <laughs> just as well you came. Quite. The poor kids can't get a word in edgeways with Loretta now. I love a puzzle, me. This one's lovely. It's got a squirrel on there. Have you decided, Colin? Oh, Loretta is no Miss No, 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 not a tray, no. Switch it off. You'll have to take control, Josh. Show the kids some toys that you think they'll like. OK. Do you like this? 
A microscope? Cool. Now, much too grown up for you. But a microscope is marvellous. Why don't we go outside and look at the beach stuff? You might like that. So, I took Caroline and Callum outside. Oh, this is impossible. And Grandpa had a plan. A plan to distract Great Aunt Loretta so Caroline and Callum could do their choosing. First, he hid behind a toy parrot and went... Squire! Be quiet! Squire! I'll shop you. Next, Grandpa made a jingly rabbit jingle. Now. Well, you can push up. Good grief, anyone would think the place was alive. I decided to show Caroline the dressing up clothes. A wizard costume? Uh, girls can't be wizards, Camomile. Caroline! And anyway, dressing up is a bit silly, isn't it? Dressing up is not silly. Grandpa had another plan. Right. He jumped down and ran into the storeroom. No, a nice word game or a card game or let me see. Oh, a knitting kit. Suddenly we heard. Ah! Oh, something's happened in the storeroom. Just then, Callum came back. How about this cowboy, Callum? Cool. I like cowboys. He's got a lasso and everything. Boxes <laughs> everywhere. Fallen off the shelf all on their own. Of course, I knew they hadn't fallen off on their own. They'd been pushed by Grandpa. Oh, would you mind giving me a hand in the storeroom, Mr. What you would call? It's right over there. There's boxes all over the floor. Place is alive, I'm telling you. <laughs> I really want this cowboy, Dad. Oh, not cowboys. I don't like cowboys, Caswell. Callum! Dad! Callum ran to find his dad to plead for the cowboy. Now, I know I keep going back to the puzzle, but... Oh! Oh! Oh, I'm getting like Mr. Whoops. Oh, thank you. Give me a hand to pick them up. There's a good girl. Just then, I saw Grandpa running out of the storeroom. So, I ran over to see him. Leave it to me to sort Loretta out. You get the others out of the shop for a bit. OK. Mr Coalminder and Callum came out of the storeroom. And Mr Coalminder headed outside to take another call. Leave hey, Loretta to me. Why don't you go outside so you can really think about what you want? OK. Come on, Callum. I saw that Grandpa had gone, so I wondered what he was up to. At that moment, I found Grandpa's clothes. Oh, no! He was running around the toy shop in his pants. But then I saw him. Yeehaw! He was dressed in the cowboy doll's clothes. I went outside and left him to work his magic. Well, now, who is this as pretty as a picture? Me? Yes, you, ma'am. You got cheeks like rosy apples and lips like cherries so red. Who are you? Little Billy McNee, the size of a flea. That's me. Oh, a real teeny tiny talking cowboy. Ooh, uh. A cowboy's life is a life so free under the prairie sky. With the sun so bright, it's a life for me. I'm a prairie boy, am I? Go to saddle my horse, go
time, a mystical minder came back. I never knew dancing could be so much fun. And dressing up. And cowboys. And cowboys and dressing up. One more time, Josh. We were still dancing and Grandpa got into my backpack. <laughs> then Mr Coalminder handed Caroline his phone, which pleased everyone. The Coalminders went off to Miss Riley's cafe for ice cream and Mr Whoops came back to the shop. So Great Aunt Loretta came home with us in Queenie. I'm just popping upstairs, Josh. When we got home, I ran upstairs as fast as I could. Grandpa jumped out of my backpack. Come on, Grandpa, quick! We did it, Josh. We helped Caroline and Karen choose. Yes, we did. And what do we call that? Teamwork! <laughs> oh, fancy! You're not having a lie down, Grandpa. Oh, I've had a day of it looking after Mr Whoopsie's shop. Have you really? <laughs> there was a teeny tiny little cowboy doll and he talked and he sang. Gave me quite a fright. I bet he sang giddy up, giddy up, yee-haw, giddy, giddy up, giddy, giddy up and away. Giddy up. How do you know that? Oh, from my cowboy days, Loretta. From my cowboy days. Don't you. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Uncle CJ had gone out together, so we were with Grandpa. Happy birthday, Terence. Terence, who lives in the big house down the road, was having a party. He wasn't really our friend, but we were still invited. I bet Terence won't like my card. He probably won't like the Captain Dumbletwit board game either. I'm afraid nothing's ever good enough for troublesome Terence. Just then, we heard the doorbell. I know who that is. The party was happening at the Smiley's Cafe, so we were getting a lift from Whoops! Mr Whoops! Mr Whoops is called Mr Whoops because he's always having little accidents. Right. <laughs> yes, I'm fine. I dropped my car keys. <laughs> is everything ready at the cafe? Totally. Jasmine, you know, Miss Smiley's lovely niece, has made some dainty sandwiches, sausages and sticks, a lot of little fruit jellies. Oh, good old-fashioned party food. That's what I like to hear. Oh, got them. And we're going to play Pin the Tail on the Donkey, Kim's um, um, Memory Game, and Pass the Parcel. And good old-fashioned party games. Marvellous. Yes, Troublesome Terrence was going to have... A good old-fashioned party. So who's running the party games? I am. Must go. Do want to be late? Bye, Grandpa. Whoops! I'm ready! Mr Whoops is running the games at Troublesome Terence's party, and that spells trouble. I'm coming too. But you can't. You're not invited. I don't want to be a guest. I want to help. And it's easier for me to help if I'm wearing this. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! You know what happens when Grandpa shrinks. He loves to play with all our toys, like the Captain Dumbletwit spaceship, or the Sunny Sands train, or my cousin Jason's toy car. Lane. Open the door, Josh! Hey! Would you believe it? I nearly drove off without you! Whoops! Come along! So off we went to Mr Whoops' car, with Grandpa flying close behind. And soon we arrived at Miss Smiley's cafe. <laughs> Terence was opening his presents. A Captain Dumble Twit board game. Boring! Grandpa was watching everything from his hiding place. All oh, you lovely party guests, it's time for our first game. Yes! Ta da! Pin the tail on the donkey. Oh, <laughs> boring old pin the tail on the donkey. 
I'm going first. Blindfold! Grandpa didn't trust Terence. He wanted to get closer so he could see exactly what he was doing. <laughs> now, stand back, everyone. Don't get in Terence's war! While everyone was helping Mr. Whoops, Terence did this. But somebody had seen him cheating. I knew it. How did I do? <gasps> Brilliantly! You put the tail right on the donkey's bottom. Well done. Who wants to go next? Hey, please. Oh, oh. Ebony, that's you. Grandpa wanted to talk to me. <laughs> Terence just cheated. It's not on. I'm going to have a word with him. You're going to need to disguise them. Good thought. Um, you see that Captain Dumbletwit doll on the tray over there? I'm sure he won't mind if I borrowed his clothes. Can you get it for me? So, Ed borrowed the Captain Dumbletwit doll and brought it to Grandpa. Thanks, Elsie. Let's see if my plan works. And the winner is... Terence! Oh! <laughs> now Grandpa had his disguise, but then Mr. Whoops said... Now, I'm going to test your memories with Kim's game. Oh, <laughs> Kim's game! Not a boring old Kim's game. <laughs> I love Kim's game. First, you have to look at... Oh, that's very odd. The Captain Dumbletwit doll is missing. I'm sure it was on this tray. Mm. Well, he can't have gone far. Everybody, will you help look for him, please? Right. This was a disaster. Any moment, someone was going to find Grandpa. Oh, there he is. Oh. Jasmine picked him up. What's he doing all the way over here? <laughs> I expect somebody borrowed him. And put him back on the tray in a cap in Dumbletwit pose. Right. First, everyone stares at the objects on the tray. Then, I'll cover them up and you have to write down as many as you can remember. Oh, Gwyn, I'm brilliant at Kim's game. <laughs> everyone stared at the objects. Poor Grandpa had to keep very, very still. He couldn't even blink. I had to do something, so I did this. Time's up. That's not fair. We didn't have long enough. No, I think you have. Now, to your chairs and write down all the objects that you can remember. Uh, Mr. Whoops, uh, could you give me some help with the sausage rolls, please? Of course, lovely Jasmine. Uh, oh, whoops. <laughs> Terence was cheating again. And of course, Grandpa saw him. <laughs> then, Mr. Whoops had a little accident. We went to help, but Terence just carried on cheating. I'm the only one who remembered them all, so I'm the winner. I said, I'm the winner. Oh, well done again, Terence. Give him a round of applause. I don't think he deserves it. I had to help Grandpa get off the tray, so I took it into the storeroom. Our next game is... Pass the parcel! Yay! Um, where is the parcel? Oh, it's you. That Terence cheated again. I'm going to have a word with him if it's the last thing that I do. <laughs> oh, what are you doing in here, Elsie? Just helping to clear up. Would you believe it? I forgot to wrap the parcel for past the parcel. <laughs> oh, I'm going to put this inside. Lovely, isn't it? It's made of china, so I have to be careful I don't... Whoops! How could I be so clumsy? Oh, dear. Now I need something else to be the prize, but what? <gasps> Captain Dumbletwit. No. But it's the perfect thing. Everyone loves Captain Dumbletwit. This was the worst thing ever. Grandpa was about to be all wrapped up. Go and join in, Elsie. You don't want to miss the fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, where did I put the sticky tape? And while Mr. Whoops looked for the sticky tape, we all waited and waited to start the game. At last... Sorry about the delay. Let's play past the parcel. The music began and we started playing the game. Then the music stopped. Oh, oh. 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 
<laughs> then it started again. Somebody was going to win Grandpa and take him home. <laughs> hey, that was Elsie's. She was holding on to it. That's cheating. Terence took off the paper and inside there was... Nothing. There's nothing here. Somehow, Grandpa had escaped. No Captain Dumble Twig figure. Oh, dear. He must have fallen out in the storeroom. <laughs> Mr Whoops, you're the worst party organiser in the world. And Terence marched off to the storeroom to find his prize. Well, well. If it isn't Terence, I thought you'd come looking for me. Captain Dumbletwit, you... you can talk. Yes, and I know what you've been up to. Lots and lots of cheating, and cheats always spoil the fun for everyone else. But I'm on a mission to make you change your ways now. Here's what I want you to do. While Grandpa was talking to Terence, we started on the party food. Then he came out, holding Grandpa. You should have won past the parcel, so this belongs to you. Sorry. It's a great toy, but I've kind of gone off Captain Dumbletwit. <laughs> OK, everyone. I'm sorry. I've been cheating and being horrible. While Terence was saying sorry to the rest of us, Elsie put Grandpa down. Mission accomplished. Well, I'll get changed and I'll be off. Enjoy the rest of the party. Grandpa flew back to the mill on the marsh. Fast as he could. <laughs> then he took off his cap and came back to his normal size. When the party was over, Mr Whoops brought us home. Captain Dumble Twit saved the day again. With a little bit of help from two very clever children. Teamwork, I call it. Teamwork! <laughs> I just wanted to check you were up and about. Did uh, Troublesome Terence enjoy his old-fashioned party? <laughs> he did. And he wasn't even troublesome. Well, he was at first. And then he completely changed, as if by magic. <laughs> <laughs>
today is going to come with me. In my pocket, Grandpa. But just then, <gasps> Auntie Jules came back. Oh, Grandpa's gone for a little lie down, has he? He's only been up five minutes, poor old thing. Lazy old thing, more like. Come on, Josh, hurry up. I hadn't managed to get Grandpa, but I knew he'd find another way of coming with me. Oh, well, I stay for a drive. And I was right. So Grandpa drove himself to Sunny Sands Harbour in my cousin Jason's car. And we sailed off down the river in Queenie. Soon, Auntie Jules dropped us off at Bob's boat, the Boomerang. It's called the Boomerang because when it sails away, it always comes back again. Right. <laughs> this will be shiny as a new pin when I've finished. <laughs> Careful on those steps, Mr Whoops. Oh, how could I be so clumsy? <laughs> While Great Aunt Loretta helped Mr Whoops up, Grandpa slid down the banister. Then he jumped onto a shelf and hid behind Bob's musical boat. Now, ooh, I've made a lovely little present for Bob to keep in his... Great Aunt Loretta never says toilet out loud because she thinks it's rude. A toilet roll cover, eh? A <laughs> rough, rough. <laughs> right, time to get on. Come on, you two. Sweep and dust. I'm going up to scrub the decks. Let the spring cleaning begin. <laughs> spring cleaning, spring cleaning. Polishing and dusting until everything is cleaning. Sweeping and mopping and scrubbing on your knees. in the... Right. A uh, vase, Mr Whoops. So, Mr Whoops went to get a vase. There, lovely. Right, now I'm going to dust all these shelves. <laughs> Grandpa knew he'd be seen by the musical boat, so he did this. He jumped onto the table and hid under the poodle by the vase of flowers. Then, the poodle did this. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. The toilet roll poodle just sneezed. Don't be so silly. It must have been Josh. Here, clear those shelves for me. And I'm going to put you where you belong, in the... Come out, Josh. Mr Wolves thought the poodle just sneezed. I guessed what had happened. Grandpa was inside a poodle in Bob's toilet. But just then, this what? happened. <laughs> Whoops. Here, take these out of and the Mr. way. And Mr. Whoops took there. the vase of flowers and put them next to the poodle on the shelf. And then this happened. Hurt you! Oh. It did it again! The toilet roll poodle sneezed! It's alive! Oh, don't be so silly. Now sit down there out of the way. I'll go check on the sneezing poodle. Right, now I'm going to polish the decks. Now you stay there. Stay. Talk to the kookaburra. I put Grandpa down. Josh! Come on out, baby. Then I went up on deck to help Great Aunt Loretta. Grandpa jumped up and hid. Oh, oh surely I could do something. Now, sit down. Stay exactly where you are. Oh, my goodness. You talk. 
a talking kookaburra? Well, I never. Who's a pretty boy, then? Who's a pretty boy? Me. I am. I am. Loretta will never believe me when I tell her that you talk. Then maybe don't tell her. We should whisper, then. Shh. Up on deck, things weren't going well. Ooh, watch out. Now it's all polished. It's very slippery. I was looking for Grandpa, but I heard... <gasps> I'll get her out, Josh. I'll get her out. And Mr Whips went upstairs to help Great Aunt Loretta. But then I heard this. Oh. Mr Whips had fallen in the water too. Then I saw Grandpa. There you are, Grandpa. Yes, I was being a talking kookaburra to stop Mr Whips from having another little accident. But he's just had one. Don't worry. Mr Whips and Loretta have got their life jackets on. They'll be perfectly safe. Just a little wet. You've got to tidy all this lot up, Josh. I told you they'd be hopeless. So I tidied everything up. And Great Aunt Loretta and Mr Whips wrapped themselves in Bob's towels and left their clothes drying on the deck. I'll let you into a secret, Loretta. The kookaburra talks. <laughs> Don't be so silly. And Great Aunt Loretta got up to take a look. It's stuffed. Grandpa had decided to make a quick getaway. He wasn't sure where to hide, so he ran through the open door. Just then, Auntie Jules oh, arrived. I found all your clothes upstairs. Oh, oh. oh. and I'm glad to see you. Oh. I'm going to get changed. And guess where she went to get changed? At that moment, Bob came home. G'day. Hello, Bob. Oh, what have you all been up to? Oh, howdy, Mr. Whoops. Ooh, problem. Little accident. <laughs> we thought we'd clean up your boat for you, Bob. Oh, that's great. Oh, I'm a bit grubby, I'm afraid. I've been out hiking with Mr. Yomper Stomper. Oh, I've made a mess already. Great Aunt Loretta was back in her clothes, but poor Grandpa couldn't hold on any longer. Hurt you! Ah. Oh! Oh, goodness me! Oh, there is a sneezing poodle in the toilet. I ran to rescue Grandpa. Oh, good grief, Bob. Look at the mess you've made. Oh, I don't know why we bothered. Bye, Bob. A sneezing poodle? Yes! And your kookaburra talks too! <laughs> right. Well, you have been having a lot of fun while I've been away, haven't you? Yes, it was awesome. Bye, Mr. Whoops. Bye, Bob. Bye, Josh. Soon, we were back at the mill on the marsh. Auntie Jules and Great Aunt Loretta went inside to make tea. I took Grandpa out of my pocket and put him down. <laughs> We did it, Josh. We stopped the Loretta and Mr. Whoops from messing up Bob's boat. Yes, Grandpa. I know what I call it. Teamwork! <laughs> oh, Grandpa, you're up. <laughs> I'll pick these for you, Grandpa. Have a smell. Oh, thank you, Loretta. <laughs> Bob didn't deserve his. He made the boomerang all muddy. Ooh, that roll holder poodle. Ooh, he kept sneezing. <laughs> like that, Grandpa. Just like that, exactly like that. Really? Oh, bread and jam, anyone. My latest hobby. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> She was staying with us while the builders were doing up her big posh house. Grandpa isn't very keen on Lady Prig's bottom, so he was keeping out of the way. Wolfie was jumping up for his squeaky sausage. Wolfie can do tricks. Isn't he a wonder dog? No, not really. Doesn't impress me. I think he's horrid. Look. Do go away, Wolfie. Shoo. It was such a pity. How could Lady Prigsbottom not love Wolfie the Wonder Dog? Grandpa 
Grandpa had been watching from the balcony, and he didn't like what he saw. I'm just taking Lady P to Sunny Sands Beach and Josh. Oh, and Wolfie. Is that a good idea? Lady P doesn't like Wolfie. Don't be silly. Everybody likes Wolfie. Not Lady P. I think I'd better come too in case there's a problem. There won't be any. Anyway, Lady P wants to borrow our beach hut so you won't be able to have your little lie down in there. You know how you hate missing your little lie downs? <laughs> the meadow, Lady Prigsbottom was fed up with waiting. We don't go soon to be night time and I can't swim in the dark. Sorry about that. I was just telling Grandpa we're all going to the beach. Oh, Yes, that's right. You, me, Josh and Wolfie. Wolfie? Yes. Wolfie loves the beach. Don't you, Wolfie? Uh, I'm just going to say goodbye to Grandpa. <sighs> Hurry up. I had a funny feeling Grandpa was about to put his cap on, and I was right. I don't trust that lady prig's bottom, Josh. I've got to come too, for Wolfie's sake. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! You know what happens when Grandpa shrinks. He can run and jump about all over the place, and it's impossible to catch him. Grandpa! He zooms around in Jason's car. <laughs> He swoops about on Gordon the seagull. He even dresses up and flies the Captain Dumbtwit spaceship. But today, he decided to take my toy helicopter as he flew out of the window. So off we went in our boat, Queenie, to Sunny Sands Beach. And Lady Prigsbottom said, This boat is too slow and that dog is a top whipping. Wolfie didn't like being called Wiffy, so he went... Ah! Grandpa made sure he got to the beach before we did. He landed out of sight. And hid in an empty bucket. Just then we arrived. Ah, sunny Sands Beach on a lovely sunny day. <laughs> you stop squeaking that sausage, you're giving me a headache. Right, I need to get changed into my swimming things. Which one's my beach hut? This one, Lady Prince Bottom. I knew Grandpa had to be hiding somewhere, and then I saw him. What's all this rubbish? There's no room for me to change. Get rid of it. Make it snappy. Oh, OK. Josh? While I was helping Auntie Jules take out all the beach things, Wolfie came back. He wanted somebody to play with him. Oh, not that rotten, squeaky sausage again. <laughs> Wolfie? I could hear Lady P playing with Wolfie. Perfect. Maybe she was starting to like him. I didn't know what she was really up to, but Grandpa did. Well, that's a bit mean. It's a good job I came. You OK, Wolfie? What have you done with your squeaky sausage? He's lost it. What a pity. Time for my swim. So, Lady Prigsbottom went inside the beach hut to change, and Auntie Jules sat down to do her latest hobby. Drawing pictures of the sea. Which was a shame, because it meant Grandpa couldn't talk to me. Then out stepped Lady Prigsbottom. She looked very strange indeed. And she was still wearing her pearls. She's still wearing her pearls. Excuse me, Lady P, but you're still wearing your pearls. Of course I am. Never take them off. They're worth millions and I don't want to lose them. Right, I'm off for my swim. Have fun. I'd like a glass of freshly squeezed orange juice when I get back, please. So Lady Prigsbottom went down to the sea. I suppose I'd better start squeezing. Auntie Jules went into the hut and I went to see Grandpa. At last we can talk. Poor Wolfie. He's lost his squeaky sausage. No. Lady Prigsbottom buried it. Where? I'll show you. Can you dig it up for me? Right. Grandpa ran over to the spot. Just there. So I got a spade and dug up the squeaky sausage. Oh, if only there was a way to make Lady Prigsbottom love Wolfie. Then I saw her. Oh no, she's coming. Hide, Grandpa. <laughs> Oh, that was horrible. The sea is absolutely freezing. <laughs> uh, 
know. Uh, I see you found the sausage. Yes, I was digging the hole and I found it. Someone must have buried it there. Oh, don't look at me, it must have been Wolfie. Auntie Jules came out of the beach hut with a glass of freshly squeezed orange juice. A glass of freshly squeezed orange juice? <laughs> Far too cold for freshly squeezed orange juice. No, what I'd really like is a mug of Miss Smiley's special hot chocolate. Bring me one from the cafe, please. Oh, OK. Josh, I think you'd better come with me. And would you mind awfully taking the whiffy dog? He's not whiffy. So off we went to Miss Smiley's, and as soon as we'd gone, Lady Pregsbottom buried the squeaky sausage. I'm not having this. Then she went back into the beach hut to put on some warm clothes. Grandpa went into action to rescue the squeaky sausage. He ran over to my toy digger and jumped on board. Then he used his magic to make it go. He lowered the scoop and dug up the squeaky sausage. Then he reversed the digger so nobody would know. Grandpa heard us coming, so he jumped down and hid again. Hot chocolate, Lady P. Oh. <sighs> Wonderful. Oh. Wolfie had found his squeaky sausage. He squeaked it and Lady Pigsbottom went. Ah, ah, oh, it's that terrible dog's fault. Him and his rotten squeaky sausage. She picked up the squeaky sausage. Wolfie, go and lie on the blanket and don't move. And put it in her bag. Wolfie. If only she could love him. How about a nice hot cup of tea instead? I'll help you. Good idea. White with three sugars, please. You have a game of bat and ball. It'll warm you up. Another good idea. <laughs> so Lady Prigsbottom started to play, and Wolfie watched her, and so did Grandpa. Then Lady Prigsbottom got a bit carried away and oh! fell over. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Hurt my bottom. Lady oh. Prigsbottom was so busy rubbing her bottom that she didn't realise her pearl necklace had come off. But Grandpa had seen it and it gave him an idea. A nice cup of hot tea. Oh. This has been the most dreadful day at the beach I've ever had. Oh, there, there. While they were busy, Grandpa oh, whispered me his plan. And the plan was this. I stood in the way so that nobody would see Grandpa throwing sand over the necklace. He gave me the thumbs up. And then I said, Lady Pridsbottom, your necklace is missing. What? No! My pearls! My pearls! Oh, everyone look for them! There were millions! We all started to look for the missing necklace. And I got Wolfie to look for it too. There, Wolfie, dig. Come, Wolfie, dig there. Good boy, good boy. Oh, good boy. I picked up the necklace. Lady P, Wolfie's found your pearls. Oh, 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 wonderful, wonderful dog. I love you. I love you. Grandpa was very happy. Yes. He made Lady Pridgebottom oh. love Wolfie. Oh. Who's a clever boy then? Grandpa's job was done, so I ran back to the helicopter and flew back to the mill on the marsh as fast as he could. He jumped out, took off his shrinking cap and came back to his normal size. Later, Auntie Jules brought us back in Queenie. Upstairs to find Grandpa. Look, you did it, Grandpa. Now Lady P thinks Wolfie's the best dog in the world. Couldn't have done it without you, though, Josh. Teamwork, eh? Yes. Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> Lady P and Wolfie were having such fun together. Oh, Grandpa, you're up. See, I told you it wouldn't be a problem with Wolfie. He's a wonder dog. <laughs> And you're a wonder, Grandpa. <laughs>
Mr. Mentor was feeling a little bit nervous. He was going to teach someone how to be an inventor. Hello, Mr. Mentor the inventor. Oh, that's me. And you must be Billy Ventus. That's me. I've come to learn how to be a remarkable inventor like you. <gasps> Wonder Bubble. Wonder Bubble? Oh, yes. I don't just invent things, you know. I invent words, too. Oh, yes, of course. Coolioso. Oh. Marvelicious. <laughs> Stupendicular. <gasps> Fabidiculous. <laughs> Fabidiculous. <laughs> Spectacular. Everyone in Sunnysands was talking about Billy Bentis. My Auntie Jules came back from shopping and told us the news. Yes, he's Mr Mentor's apprentice. Billy Bentis the apprentice. I like it. What's an apprentice? Somebody who's learning how to do a job. So Billy's learning how to be an inventor. Isn't it fabidiculous? Absolutely. <laughs> I'd like to meet Billy Bentis. Me too. Me too. Yes, we were all looking forward to meeting Billy Bentis the Apprentice. Billy's so lucky. Mr Mentor is one of the most remarkable inventors in the universe. <laughs> Something on your mind, Grandpa? Cup of tea. I'll make you one. But Grandpa didn't have tea on his mind. If Mr Mentor is teaching Billy to be an apprentice, he's going to need my help. But you can't climb up all those lighthouse stairs. No, but luckily, I have other ways of getting there. <gasps> Not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! You know what happens when Grandpa shrinks. He's just magic! Grandpa, come back! He runs around at top speed, and he's impossible to catch, and he uses his magic to make things go, like Jason's to a car. And sometimes he dresses up as something to save the day. Captain Dumbletwit to the rescue! But this time, Grandpa decided to take the blame. Here you go, Grandpa. Oh, he's not here. Sorry, he couldn't wait. Couldn't wait to lie down, you mean? He's the only grandpa I know that has emergency lie downs. Oh well, I can't put off changing those beds any longer. Of course, grandpa is on his way to the lighthouse. Where Billy Bentis, the apprentice, was having his first inventing lesson. Now, uh, uh, once you have invented your invention, you have to test it out. Oh. Mr Mentor and Billy were so busy, they didn't see Grandpa flying through the window or landing out of sight. Yeah. Now, uh, take my Wizzy Woodlesome Waker Upper, for example. One of my most fabidiculous inventions ever. Uh, what do you think it does? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Does it wake you up in the morning? Yes. And it'll wake you up in the middle of the night if it thinks you've had enough sleep. If it works. Now, I'll show you how you test your invention. <clears throat> Number one, a press the start button. <gasps> press the start button. So, Mr Mentor pressed the start button, but nothing happened. Nothing happened? Uh, uh, it's broken. Uh, not necessarily. It might just be uh, feeling shy. Uh, look away, Billy. I'm glad I came. Grandpa slid down and jumped inside. Are you sure inventions can be shy? Uh, oh, yes, oh, yes. Shy, lazy, grumpy, mischievous. You'd be surprised. Inside the Wizzy Woodlesome Wake wrapper, Grandpa was working hard to fix the problem. Yes. And sometimes they just start working by themselves. No, that's impossible. My inventions do it all the time. I've absolutely no idea how they do it, but they do. <laughs> Grandpa, I've done it! Yes! Oh, see? Oh, I told you. I'd like to know how that happened. Mind if I investigate? Be my guest. So, Billy Ventus, 
went up to the Wizzy Woodles and wake her up and put his hand in. Grandpa had to lean right back so Billy didn't find him. I have no idea why he just started working. But I think we should block up this hole. Dust could get in, or even little creatures. Really? Seems unlikely. But block it up if you wish. <laughs> so Billy blocked the hole up, so now the dust couldn't get in. Bother! And Grandpa couldn't get out. All this is very interesting, Mr Mentor, but I'd much rather invent something myself. Well, I suppose you might manage to invent something really simple if I give you lots of help. <gasps> Meanwhile, back at the mill on the marsh, I was starting to worry about Grandpa. That's all the guest beds changed, but I've run out of little soaps. Sorry, Josh, I'm afraid we're going to have to pop back into Sunny Sands. Great! Can you drop me off at the lighthouse? Then I can meet Billy Ventus. What a lovely idea. I'll just go and tell Grandpa we're going. No, no, don't! Grandpa's really tired. So off we went to Sunny Sands in Campo. And Auntie Jules said, It's such a beautiful day. I feel so sorry for Grandpa, stuck inside all the time. Little did I know that Grandpa was stuck inside at that very moment. He was walking up and down, trying to think of a way out. There must be a way out. There must. Now, Billy Bentis had been very busy, and in no time at all, he'd invented this. Ta-da! Then I arrived. What brilliant timing. We're just about to test out my apprentice's first ever invention. It's a tippy-toe tell-me. It can tell you who's coming just by the sound of their footsteps. Now, don't worry, Billy, if it doesn't work first time. Now, do you remember how you started? Press the start button. So Billy pressed the start button and the machine sprang into life. Grandpa was still pacing up and down inside the wake rocker. Stupendicular! Then I say, tell me, Tippito, tell me, is there anyone near? And the invention said, Grandpa's coming. Grandpa's coming. It's Grandpa's footsteps that I hear. Yay! It works! First time, too! No, no, it can't be Grandpa. He couldn't get up the lighthouse stairs. I'm sorry, my young apprentice, but the tippy-toe tell-me has got it wrong. I knew the tippy-toe tell-me hadn't got it wrong. Grandpa was somewhere in the room. But why has it got it wrong? There has to be a reason. I couldn't see Grandpa anywhere. Maybe he was stuck in one of the inventions. But which one? Something definitely needs fixing. But what? I have an idea. Maybe it just needs time to think about it. I'm Josh, by the way. Josh! He's here. Thank goodness. Now he can help you get me out. Grandpa started to think of a plan. Well, I can't see anything wrong with my tippy-toe, tell me. Let's try again. So Billy pressed the start button and the invention sprang into life. Tell me, Tippy-toe, tell me. Is there anyone near? And the invention said... Grandpa's coming. Grandpa's coming. It's Grandpa's footsteps that I hear. There's no sign of Grandpa here. I think your invention is teasing us. Impossible. There's just something wrong with it. And then suddenly, this happened. Whoa! How very peculiar is Who Why is it doing that? Why, why? It was Grandpa sending me a message that he was inside the Wizzy Wheels from Wake Up. You go outside! Give it to me! I got Grandpa out of the Wizzy Wheels from Wake Up and put him on the floor. Oh, thanks, Josh. I thought I'd never escape. Grandpa, the Tipito tell me knows you're here. You've got to go now before you're found out. OK, see you back at base. Grandpa jumped into the plane and flew out of the window. It's no good. I'll never be a remarkable inventor like you, Mr Mentor. I might as well give up. Oh, don't say that, Lily. My inventions always work at the end. Like the Wizzy Woodlesome Waker Up today, for example. I think you should give it another try. 
OK. Just once more. So Billy pressed the start button and the machine sprang into life. And Billy said... Tell me, Tippy Toe, tell me. Is there anyone near? And the invention said... Jules is coming. Jules is coming. It's Jules' present that I hear. Grandpa flew back to the middle of the marsh as fast as he could and we weren't far behind. You made it, Grandpa! Well done for fixing the Wizzy Woodles and Wake Rapper. And well done for rescuing me. Teamwork, I call it. Teamwork! <laughs> Grandpa, you poor thing. You've been stuck inside for ages. Oh, well, I was, but I'm all right now. I wish you could have seen the tippy-toe tell me that Billy invented. It was spectacular. Oh, it worked, did it? Good. In the end, apparently it kept saying that you were in the lighthouse. As if that could ever happen. <laughs> <laughs> as if. <laughs> <laughs>